Hi, here we are again to talk about um, SpriteKit and Swift. And right now I'm in Sketch. And what I'd like to talk about is how we're going to create an endless scrolling background or endless scrolling environment. Okay. So before we start, let me kind of explain what these little boxes and things are here that I have on the screen. And then I'm going to use this to kind of, you know, illustrate like how we're going to create a software system to create an endless scrolling background. Okay. So what I have here is I have um, a box here with kind of a crosshair in the middle. This is going to be the camera. And um, SpriteKit has a special node type called an SK camera node. And the SK camera node gives us sort of a viewport that we can use to view our scene. And you can move the camera around. You can tie it to an object. Um, so you can animate it and you can do things with it. So imagine, you know, we had a landscape. Imagine this is our landscape here. And it's, it's wider than the actual size of the screen. You know, if we had a camera, we could take the camera and pan through the landscape like this, right? So we could, you know, move through an area that was much larger than, um, than what would fit on the screen, right? Okay, this is going to be the player object, you know, so imagine our players in the scene, it might sit on the ground like this, or it might, you know, jump over a mountain or something or land on a building, right? Okay, we'll use that in a moment. And then imagine that each one of these boxes right here is a landscape and you know we could have different we could populate this landscape with different content right so and we could even do that while the game is is running like we could you know delete all the sprites from this scene and then repopulate it with new sprites so maybe it looked like this and then later you know after we you know showed this screen and it passed all the way through our camera view we could repopulate it with different content so it looked different again, right? So let me illustrate like how I want to set up our game. And there's probably a lot of ways to do this. This is the way that I thought of, and I think that this is pretty good. It's easy to understand, and it actually makes it a lot easier to, to code all of the other stuff that's going to be going on, right? So here's what I'm going to propose, okay? What we're going to have is we're going to have two background sections, okay? So we got two of them. And the reason we need two is because when we're in the viewport here, one of our background sections will be the size of the screen, or it could be larger, but it can't be any smaller than the viewport, okay? So what you can see on the screen, okay? So it, it, it has to be at least that big or bigger, okay? I made these exactly that size, okay? And we need two of these because as the viewport um, pans like this, we'll be able to see only part of this one and then some of the next one. Okay, so as the viewport moves, right, we always need to have enough, you know, background material here to fill the entire viewport. Okay, so it has to be at least as big as as the the, the, the camera viewing area. Okay, you know, essentially think about that as the size of the screen. Okay, so next. Um, as, and there's a couple ways that we can do this. Um, I'm going to lock the camera for a moment. One, one method would be that we could grab the two backgrounds here and we could move the backgrounds past the camera like this, right? And when they get all the way to one side, then we could grab this one and we could move it all the way back here repopulate it with different material, right, or different content, and then, you know, continue on our way, scrolling the background like this. And then again, when this one got off the edge, we could grab it and, oops, let me just grab that one, right, and then move it back over to this side and then continue scrolling, right? Okay. So let's add the player object. So if I put the player here, right here's what's going to happen right i'm going to select these guys and if i scroll the background you can see the player sits there and it kind of you know sits there and watches the background go by and it, it looks like he's kind of moving through the scene right and that could work pretty good um but it means we have to move the background right and and that would work that would work in a lot of situations and it's probably just as good as the method that I'm going to actually use but uh, but I'm going to treat this a little bit differently and what I'd like to do is this okay rather than moving the background 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to propose that we move the player. So the player object is going to move through the scene like this. And you can see like when the player is moving, when I'm moving the player in this way, um, what happens is, you know, it leaves the, the camera viewport, right? And then we have a problem, right? Because he's, he's off the screen now, even though he's still moving through the landscape. So what I'm going to say is let's move the player and then have the camera follow the player. So I'm actually going to group the, the player and the camera together here. Right, let me do that. And what I'm going to say is we're going to move the player and the camera will follow the player like this through the landscape. Okay? And whenever a landscape section, like one of these colored sections back here, gets out of view of the camera, what we'll do is we'll take it and we'll put it on the other side of the camera like that. And then our camera can continue moving through space like this. And when it gets to about here and this one gets out of view, we'll take it and we'll move it back. Okay? So that's what I'm going to propose, and that's the system that I'm going to outline in the next couple of videos, right? So now there's a couple things that, that, that will make this work, right? So to understand it, um, what we're going to need to do, and let me actually kind of reset this, right? I'm going to grab all these guys and uh, maybe put them at uh, zero X right there, right? Let me move this one over here. Okay, so I'm just going to nudge this guy over, right? Okay, so let's uh, let's go view um, rulers here, right? Okay, so you can see um, on my rulers here that, that this edge is zero, okay? And so the camera is half the width, right? And this is about 667, okay? Because that's the, that's the width or the height of the iPhone 6, right? Um, right, or 6, um, or 6S, right? So what we'll do is we'll move the camera, and what we're going to do is we're going to subtract the X position of the camera, which in this case is about 1,002 or something, right? Okay, so we'll subtract the X here from the X position of this guy, okay? And that should give us the distance where this is off the screen, because this should be about 667, something like that, okay? So roughly this is what we're going to do. And whenever this, the position of this um, background is greater than the distance from here to the camera there and to this area, right? That's half the distance here and half the distance there, which is the full width of this guy, right? We'll take it and we'll move it to widths. So this is 667, and if I moved it back 667, it would be here. It would actually be underneath, right? And then if we moved it another 667 to here, it would be in the perfect spot to where it would continue into the next scene with the camera, right? So when we get, when the camera gets to here, and the orange one is off the edge, we'll know because the distance from here to the center here will be 667. And then we'll take it and we'll move it one width and two widths over to the right. Okay? It's going to work out a little bit differently when we actually do it, because I think what we'll do is we'll take the anchor point and we'll move it to the right edge. Okay? So these guys, they won't have their anchor point in the center. It'll actually be on the right edge. But, uh, but anyway, you get the idea, right? And the idea is as the player moves through the scene, the player's X position will increase constantly, right? And the camera will just follow the player, okay? And then whenever the background gets out of view, right, one of these background sections, and we'll just have two of them, right, we'll remove it and place it on the other side. Right? And in that way, we'll just continue through the landscape. And I think this will help us out in a few ways, because it'll give us a way to easily track how far the players traveled, because it'll just be the X value. And you can see I'm constantly increasing on the X value here as I move the player and the camera. Right, And also, it will also allow us to 
um, not have to manage a lot of objects moving. We only have to move the one object, which is the player, and then have the camera follow, right? So having the camera follow is pretty easy once we get the player moving forward. Plus, that'll give us some other little perks with, uh, with physics, because if the player is actually moving forward, then if there's anything we need to do with physics, like find out if the player actually hits an object, then it will be due to the player moving forward, which will you know help us out creating physics. And also, if we have a particle system on the player, it'll leave a particle trail behind because the player is actually moving forward, right? So anyway, so that's my that's my general game plan there, okay? And then we'll actually do this in in code over the next couple videos, okay? So uh, anyway, I hope that is helpful and maybe um, explains what's going on in the next couple videos, okay? So thanks for watching.